Hi guys, happy live, happy Wednesday, happy March. Sorry I'm a little bit late, my phone has been going crazy today. We had a lot of new listings and I haven't been able to put my phone down much so I apologize. I am going to do the usual, okay, so I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions that have come in throughout the week. If you would like to uh, ask some more, feel free to write them in the chat and I will answer as many as I can, uh, depending on time, or you can just write them in if you don't want to have publicly people see what your question is and I can answer it privately for you. I will also do some happy news and real estate updates, okay? So thank you guys for popping in again and happy live. It's supposed to be 13 degrees this Sunday, which I'm super looking forward to, some mild weather. So hopefully you guys have had a great week so far and are looking forward to the weekend as well. So we're gonna start with a question first, okay? So the first question comes from Ben in Moonstone. Um, so Ben in Moonstone says, how much value is added being close to the ski hill? For example, I'm a three minute walk and my brother's place is about 12 minutes. How much more value would my place have? Uh, thank you, Ben, for asking. So again, Ben is in Moonstone, so by Mount St. Louis Moonstone, I would imagine. It's the only ski hill there that I can think of. Um, so there's not a set amount. So some people will love being close to the ski hill and give you, whether it's 20,000 more, 50,000 more, or only 5,000 more, there's no set dollar amount. Whereas other people will say, like, they picture, like, the lights, you know what I mean, beaming in from the hill all the time, and they think of traffic, and they think of noise, etc. So not everybody will give you a value for it, so there's no unfortunate answer for you. Um, a lot of people would like to be close to it, but not everybody, so there's no generic answer. So I could say, you know, on average, what an extra um, bathroom would give you, or an extra garage, or an updated kitchen, but there's no generic answer for that, Ben, so I apologize. I know that's not what you wanted to hear, but that <laughs> is my answer. Um, but people definitely like a couple weekends or weeks ago on one of these lives, I said what was, um, you know, increasing in rate and it was actually like small little towns, whether it was Whiskey Hills or like Waterfront. They were like the main things with populations under 100,000. So those are ones that were skyrocketing more than places with like 800,000, 1.5 million, etc. Um, it was the small little towns under 100,000, but they had to have something there, like a destination of a ski resort or something, okay? Um, hi, Tiff, how are you? Hi, Becky, I can't see everybody on there, but thanks for popping in. Um, so again, we're gonna do real estate updates as well as some questions um, and some happy news. So some happy news first. Um, so keeping it out of landfills, um, basically there is a store in Germany and it's like Ikea, the size of Ikea, Hi, Sam. Um, how is, sorry, Friday Harbor investment? So Friday Harbor's great. Um, it's a, I don't know if you know like details on it, um, a complex just east in Innisfil. And the only thing that kind of sucks about it is they have three fees every month. So you know how like a regular condo, I'm in a condo right now, for example, it usually has one fee, a condo fee, and Friday Harbor has three fees and they also have a 2% fee to buy in which not a lot of people know about that 2% fee, but obviously it's a destination this summer. Um, last summer, like Justin Bieber's mom was there. Um, and I don't know if this is true, but supposedly like Drake has a place there. Um, so there's different people and, and so forth. There's obviously the restaurants down at Water and the LCBO and lots of boats go in there, but um, it always has lots of Airbnb. So you just kind of have to look, like you're saying investment wise, to see what your competition is. But thank you for the question. Hi, Margie, how are you? Hi, Graham. I can't see who that is. Hi, Becky. Um, so sorry, I was saying a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of happy news before I do the real estate stuff. So this place in Germany, but thank you, Sam, for your question, is basically the size of a, an Ikea. It started with uh, one person and now it has over um, 700 employees. It started in 2001. And basically it's the size of an Ikea, but it just has refurbished and used stuff. So they keep everything obviously out of the landfills and um, over 400,000 pieces every single year uh, stay out of landfills because of this store. And over 70% of people in Germany said they would rather just get a new electronic or a new piece of furniture, et cetera, as opposed to say fixing a rip in a chair or fixing a computer, et cetera. So this man wanted to help uh, keep things out of the landfill. So that is what he decided to do. And like their motto is about, um, I don't know exactly, but it's about refurbished and used as like the new sexy. So that's what they do over there. Um, and again, it, it uh, employs hundreds of people now and is as big as an Ikea. So that's pretty cool. Um, no worries, Sam. Yeah, it's just a lot of people don't know about that 2% thing as well as the different fees every single month. So as long as you equate it into your 
um, pay. Like, so if you think, oh, my mortgage is going to be 2000 but then you add in, you know, the one fee is 530 and the other fee is 218 and blah, blah. Those are not exact fees. I'm just saying um, there is three sets of fees out in Friday Harbor, okay? Um, but it's nice to have the golf course and everything, and there's a cute path. I don't know if you guys know about the acreage in there, and, like, in the winter, they have it all set up with uh, Christmas lights and so forth. I think they have hot chocolate and stuff, too. Um, so next question comes from Graham in Romera. So Graham and Romera said, we're looking at selling and moving out east, possibly to New Brunswick. We have waterfront. Is it safe to assume that listing in May or June when leaves are full and people can see the water would be the best plan? Um, thank you, Graham, for asking. So to be honest, having waterfront, if you're waiting till May or June and the average closing is 60 to 90 days, so let's just say you're in the middle of May, middle of June, middle of July automatically takes you to, or maybe even middle of August, and a lot of people would like to move or at least get possession like the beginning of May or even April in case they want to do some fixes. So a lot of people actually list now. I know it sounds weird because there's ice on the lake, but we just sold one, for example, last week and we had summer photos. So you have the winter photos, you have the summer photos, and then people can take possession and they can enjoy it as opposed to missing half of the prime time uh, season for the waterfront. So I actually wouldn't suggest waiting till May or June. I would suggest putting it up sooner than later. Um, hi, Dad, how are you? Hi, Chris, hi. I can't see that as I think it's Mandy. Um, okay, what's the next thing? Uh, if you guys have questions like Sam did, feel free to write them in there and I'll do the real estate updates in one minute. Um, so think of you're in high school. Again, I'm not doing the real estate stuff yet, but you're in high school. They tell you to go to the auditorium and then they tell you that your whole entire school is getting free college for the whole term that you're there as well as free board, free books and paying your way. Um, as well as paying for one of your parents to go to college. So that is what happened at five high schools in Chicago. So there was a company that just started a nonprofit uh, fall of 2021, and they have already raised over $40 million towards their $1 billion uh, goal. So that $40 million covered those five high schools, which was amazing, and it's called Hope Chicago. And so uh, I said already about the $40 million. That was all by memory. Um, but so they say only 63% of people in Chicago go to college and only 27% of those 63 actually finish. So this is to hopefully help those people because they don't have to worry about the stress of payments, etc. And they also get to have um, spending money, counseling and tutoring is included in that as well as a bunch of free workshops and seminars and mentoring. So 90% um, of it's actually more than 90% of people at public schools um, public schools in Chicago are of color and more than 80% of them are low income. So uh, somebody had the idea to do this again in fall of 2021. It's already this big already. So that's really cool. Um, Waterfront and Crystal Beach Road last year. We were on the city service. Okay, awesome, Sam. Um, Sam said he purchased Waterfront and Crystal Beach Road last year. Um, that's nice. It's right down by Innisfil Beach Park. So it's a super popular area. And um, possibly you know that I have rentals there as well. So that is good for you. And you can message me after if you have any questions about them or if you don't know. Or you can message them in here. Um, and I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, the next question comes from Katie and Grant in Barrie. So Katie and Grant and Barry said, are open houses a thing anymore? We really don't want to bug an agent because we're so indecisive and all over the map. So prefer to just go around ourselves and do open houses but haven't seen them in ages. Um, thank you, Katie and Grant, for asking. So it keeps going up and down, like we're allowed to do them, we're not allowed to do them, we're allowed to do them, we're not. Um, last I heard, the end of January, we were allowed to do them, but so many agents have just gotten used to not doing them. I do lives, for example, every weekend, so I just go around like with a selfie stick, and I talk to people kind of just like you, and I'll tell about the property. I'll say, oh, do you see the stainless steel appliances? Do you see the soft-closed cupboards, etc.? And they can ask questions from the comfort of their own home. So that way you're not bugging a realtor. You can just watch as you like. If you don't like it, you can stop watching, or you can watch while you're eating food or having a bath or doing whatever you want, walking your dog outside, etc. Um, so it actually makes it easier. So, yeah, there's not a lot of actual real-time old fashion open houses like there used to be, but I appreciate you asking and I appreciate you wanting to respect the time of a realtor if you're indecisive, but thank you for asking. And so one more thing before real estate, okay? Um, so I'm sure lots of you guys remember firefighter calendars. Oftentimes it was to earn money for, you know, a firefighter association or some nonprofit, etc. And sometimes it was like firefighters versus police or something like that. But there was a lady in a small town in California, and she said, you know, she sees all of these um, 
you know, not so great examples of men on the news and what have you. And she had experienced a lot of good examples in, you know, men in her small community and so forth. So she decided to do this calendar, which on every single month she had interviewed, obviously ahead of time, these different people. So one was like the mayor, um, some were single dads, some had nonprofit organizations, some had given their services fully, like one was a uh, uh, carpenter or what have you. So he said anything for free he would do during COVID. So, cause he said something about a busy mind is better than a still mind. So she did all these articles on these people and uh, she sells these calendars online and half of the, um, profits go to a safe house for, uh, sex traffic children. And the other half goes to a cancer foundation in California. So I thought that was cool. I'm going to look, sorry, at, um, Ram's questions. If I turn this phone to Airbnb, what do you think? Three bedroom, two washroom, three car parking. What do you think? How much you can get a rent average or night? Um, sorry, Sam, is yours yours is waterfront? You said yeah. Um, I purchased waterfront and Crystal Beach. Assuming you mean Crystal Beach on the waterfront side. Um, dun, 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 dun. Sorry, it's hard to read just the way my phone is angled. Um, I can talk to you. Uh, it just it keeps repeating questions for some reason, Sam. Um, to be honest, oh yeah, waterfront. To be honest, so in the summer you should be getting around sixty five hundred a week, um, and an off season around three thousand a week. But I can go through it because I need to see like if yours is updated, if it's not, how many beds it sleeps, etc. Because it all goes off of how many people you can sleep. So if you have this massive house but with like four great rooms and not a lot of bedrooms and not a lot of places to sleep or your bathrooms are grungy or your kitchen's grungy or do you know what I mean? It looks like a dive, etc. So it's kind of hard to say without me seeing it, but I can dive into that for you and um, we could maybe jump on a Zoom or something. Hi, Rob. How are you? Um, hi, Laura. Hi. I can't see it is Nikki. Um, hopefully everybody's well. So you guys jumped in just in time for real estate. So I'm going to go to my real estate section. So they have warned us um, for quite some time. So originally they said that the um, interest rates were going to go up in the fall. Then they said they were going to go up in March. Then they didn't say, is it going to go up the end of March or the beginning of March? And it went up yesterday night. So obviously the beginning of March. So last night it raised um, a quarter percent. So 0.25%. The Bank of Canada and Royal Bank and TD Bank has already up theirs as well. And I'm sure the rest of the aid lenders will follow suit very soon. So um, what that means basically is if you have a fixed rate, it's not going to change anything, but if you have a variable rate, it will change things. Again, it's only 0.25%. It's not like it's 4% or anything like that. Uh, they are expected that there'll be about six more times that it does go up in the next 18 months, but so far it's just been the one. So that again happened last night. So the main thing though is like a lot of people think it's going to be crazy and the market's going to crash, whatever, but the main thing, not the main thing, but some of the things are, um, just less than 30% of people even have a mortgage anyway. Tons of people were approved at the 2% higher. So if it goes up 0.25%, they were already approved at 2% higher. So 0.25% is not going to do anything. And majority of people are in fixed uh, mortgages anyways, not variable mortgages. And what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh yeah, a lot of people, for example, I had somebody that broke her uh, mortgage because she was already locked in at 3.6. So she's like, I'm going to pay the penalty and get in at the lower rate. So even though right now some people's will go from, you know, 1.3 to 1.55 or they're at 1.7, they're going to go to 1.95, etc. It's still lower than a lot of people are paying. So some people are, even though people are like, oh, the rates went up, it's actually way cheaper than a lot of people are locked into. So it's not going to do anything to the market. They think that if something were to happen to the market, it would have to go up at least more than a percent. And even if it went up more than 1%, it would take at least six to eight months for us to see anything of that. I will talk about that in more detail, but um, we would still need to not have our lack of inventory, which we have extreme lack of inventory, okay? Um, no worries, Sam. And hi, I can't see who that is. I think it's Patty. Okay, so I'm talking a lot. Um, I think I missed something there. No, I did not. Um, so the only people, to be honest, that it really affects the 0.25, unfortunately, is the first time buyers because, like I said, the people are already locked in. Um, they already have fixed rates or they were approved at that 2% higher or they don't even have mortgages, etc. So it's hurting the first time buyers more than anybody else. 
Um, so rates were already low as it was. So some people ask like, why were the rates so low in the first place? So they lowered them right at the begin, uh, beginning of COVID because they were afraid of, I wanna see their exact wording, was an economic collapse due to the virus, which anybody that has watched real estate in the past few years it has done the complete opposite. So there was definitely no collapse and an extreme, extreme skyrocket in the market. Um, my, I don't know why I'm like so out of breath today. I'm like <laughs> going a million miles a minute today. I think it's just because I've been talking to so many people on the phone and talk to one person on the phone. I have like 10 missed calls from somebody else. Um, so the bank is not hoping that putting the interest rates is going to crash the market. They hope that putting the interest rates up will slow the market. So instead of it doing like insanity like this, they're hoping that it makes it more level. They're not expecting it to go like this. They're not expecting it to go like this, okay? They're just hoping that it'll level out more, not level, but just come down instead of its extreme amounts. Did not block my face, doesn't matter. The extreme amounts that's been going up, they're just hoping that it levels it a bit, okay? It's not going to crash it or make it burst, uh, burst or pop or derail the whole thing, okay? Um, what else? Um, for example, the craziness. Um, I don't know if you guys know where Booth is. It's over by um, Holly Rec Center. So there's a 1,036 square foot home there for listed for 1.1. It's a Pratt House, one car garage is insane. Um, there's also a townhome on Percy, which is just behind the Cadillac dealership on Bayfield, listed for 1.3 for a townhome. Um, it's just completely insane. Um, so every bank, I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm just gonna give you an example of some of the banks, what their rates are, okay? So Bank of Montreal is 2.4, Four or five, as is CIBC, Home Trust 1.35, HSBC 1.39, Meridian 1.45, uh, RBC 2.45, Scotia 2.65, um, TD 2.6, and uh, Tangerine is 1.65. Okay, so we still have super low rates. Um, nothing crazy again. Back in the day, anybody that remembers uh, 90, 91, etc. I was not in the market. Um, I was too young, but they had, um, you know, above 10%, 12%, 15%, etc. So just because, you know, we might go from somebody's paying, you know, 1.8, now they're paying 2.05, big whoop de doo -da. It's not anything crazy. In past weeks, I've said what will affect people's mortgage per month, and the highest anybody's went up was less than $200. It was like 165 or something like that, and that was like the highest. So it's not like people's mortgages are jumping from 1500 to 3200 or anything like that, okay? It's a small amount, 0.25%, okay? It's just supposed to lull the market a little bit, but um, it probably won't right now. Again, they say that they'll do six more and that economists say it needs to go up at least over a percent to even do anything, but it'll take six to 18 months to even affect that. Um, what else? So previously cities like Vancouver and Toronto, et cetera, which are always the highest, um, and people are obviously leaving with the pandemic and so forth, they can work from home, they're reevaluating their lifestyles, et cetera. They're still going up even though they don't have the same um, draw that they used to. So for example, Toronto went up over 28%. So last month, their average sales price was a million 95 over last year at the same time was 929. So again, over 28% in Toronto. And then what drives this like non-bubble? So it's not a bubble. What drives the non-bubble is the extreme demand, okay? Crazy, crazy amount of demand, amount of people trying to buy properties. I'll talk about who a lot of those people are later. And in the past, anybody who's watched this, I've talked sometimes about the baby boomers, um, et cetera, and then they're living longer and healthier, et cetera. They don't want to go into nursing homes. They're not ready to go into condos, et cetera. They would rather renovate their homes. And I'll also talk about millennials as well, but in a little bit. Um, so there's also been, besides just the high demand, there has been a lot of people saving money during COVID. There has been a lot of people that haven't been spending money because, hence saving, uh, because they're like, what is there to buy? Some people say it's because of government assistance. Other people say there's just nothing to do. Um, and a lot of people haven't felt the greatest with the um, uh, stock market. So they've been pulling their money out of that and investing in real estate instead. Um, I, to be honest, Sam, so Calgary, he said about this um, Calgary market. So I say stuff, sometimes I say stuff about Vancouver, some tough, sometimes I say stuff about out east, etc. but I don't every single week say about Calgary. I only sometimes say about Calgary. So they don't go up um, as much, obviously, as Ontario cities have, but I don't say every single week. But I can look up more if you would like. Um, happy Wednesday, Scotty. Thank you guys for popping in. Sorry, just checking who's there and on the side. Um, 
Okay, so even though, yeah, interest rates are up 0.25, still crazy low, okay? Um, also, besides just freehold homes, which are homes which do not have condo fees, uh, condos have gone up because not everybody can afford to buy a freehold home. So then the condo, so the beginning of COVID, uh, obviously there was a bit of a lull just because people didn't know what was going on in the world. Then it skyrocketed again, but at first it was just freehold homes. And then as they skyrocket and people are like, holy, I can't afford 900 for that, which is then a million, which is then a million uh, 80 and then 1.15, 1.17, etc., and just going up so fast. So then they're getting into condos. So freeholds and condos have gone up during the uh, pandemic. Okay. Um, and you know how I was saying about Toronto, how it had gone up over 28%. So Vancouver, again, even though it's not as sought after as it once was, it has gone up over 42.2% over last year, which is crazy. And it's over 33% uh, percent higher than its 10-year average of what it normally goes up, okay? So to get a detached home now in Vancouver is over 1.9, and to get a townhome is over a million. Um, but I did just say there was a townhome in Barrie for sale for 1.3. So there you go. And sorry... My friend is calling me and I just had to decline him. Um, okay, so just to recap, besides low interest rates, you know, people working from home, the um, stock market that they don't want to invest in, and then people having saved money during the um, pandemic, as well as obviously the low interest rates. But the main thing is the incredible demand and the lack of inventory, okay? Um, I can't see all who's on there. I think it says Christina and I can't see Josie. Maybe I can't tell. Um, but thank you guys for popping on. Okay. So 2022 is still supposed to be a crazy strong year, but not as crazy as 2021. So it's supposed to be the second highest year. Doesn't mean less um, average sales price than 2021. It just means less sold than 2021. And the reason they think that is, is because they think that the interest rate rising will take some people out of the market so they can't buy, as well as they're making the rules a bit tighter for investors. So some people will have to wait on the sidelines. So that's why they think that there won't be as many sales as there was in 2021, but the average sales price will still be higher than 2021 in Ontario as well as Canada, okay? Um, what else? Oh yeah, so there won't be like a lull at all. Like I said that, you know, they're trying to, it doesn't go up like this, but basically like this. They're trying to do this, um, but in fall uh, is supposed to be a lull, but doesn't mean again that it's supposed to flatline or go down. They just don't think it's going to be as much as a feeding frenzy as it currently is and will be into the spring market. Um, and the direction is not going to go down. It's still going to appreciate, but just not at such an extreme rate. Um, so last year they said they needed either 180 to 250,000 homes. They don't, didn't know exactly to make the market not such a feeding frenzy. However, to make it a balanced market, they needed more than triple the homes, okay? Um, triple the 180 to 250 to make it a balanced market, which obviously we had nowhere near that amount of homes sold. And bidding wars are still expected to go in 2022. The only place they're not expected to be is in the prairies and Newfoundland where they think there'll be um, some bidding wars, but they also think some will sell under market price, not under market price, but asking price. So say it's asking 400, you might get for 380, 385, et cetera. Whereas obviously in other parts of Canada, you list it for 400, you get 680 um, or 730, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've spoken about millennials before in the past. So there's over 10.5 million millennials in Canada. There's over 38 million Canadians. So more than a quarter of Canadians are millennials. So mid twenties to about 40. And obviously that is a prime time for people to be getting into the market if they're not in the market already. So there are tons of millennials trying to get in the market. And of all those 10.5 million millennials, um, that is more than 800,000 more millennials than there were five years ago. Okay. So obviously that many more people trying to get in, which is my next thing, which has to do with immigration. So even though there was COVID and borders closed, et cetera, and lots going on in the world, uh, Canada still got uh, 401,000 new people to the country and they're supposed to get 411,000 this year. So you have 800,000 more millennials than five years ago. You have 400,000 new people, 401,000 to be exact, new people last year. Another 411,000 this year, obviously not taking into consideration deaths and births, etc., but just strictly of immigrants, so 411,000. Um, so hence our lack of inventory. Again, then the um, baby boomers not wanting to move into condos or smaller homes and they'd rather stay um, and just kind of that bottleneck effect and we keep running into no inventory, okay? Um, 
So even though there's obviously been lots of businesses that have had to shut down or close their doors or have, you know, they're open and they're closed for four months and they're open, there's actually been a lower rate of del delinquencies in mortgages, which what that means is people that do not pay their mortgage. So it actually had a lower rate during COVID, which is surprising considering, you know, some people might think that it'd be a higher rate or people foreclosing on their homes, etc., which it was not. Um, and also households average net worth in Ontario went up since the pandemic as did their savings on average, okay? So that is really cool that people are saving. Um, again, I said some people say it's because of government some supplements and some people say it's just because there's nothing to do <laughs> or to spend on. Um, so I had said about the rates, so they're saying that there's still supposed to be about six that will come in the next 18 months. They have said it'll raise about 1.5%. But some economists are saying 0.7. So it really depends who you ask. And I guess time will tell what ends up happening. So I can't say on that. Um, so they're saying who will feel the rates more. Like I said, it's not going to jump your mortgage from 1500 to 3200 etc. At the highest, when I did, I think it was three weeks ago, the highest was under $200, like 165 or something. And that was over an 18-month period. Some banks are not even going to raise it. They're just going to add it into the amortization. So let's just say you have 18 years left. They might bump it up to 19.2 years, for example, and keep your rate, or not keep your rate, keep your um, payment every month the same. So they're saying the main people that will feel the rate change are people that live in higher priced areas because they have higher mortgages, etc., higher payments. However, some people say, well, they have the money to pay it, so there might not be anybody that really feels it. But basically, like, um, I don't know, just expensive neighborhoods. Two million, four million, seven million, etc. Um, okay, so also the um, government is not put into uh, place this, it's not set in stone. However, they're trying to do some things with foreign buyers. So they're trying to ban them for the next two years from buying non-recreational properties. So they could still buy recreational properties, right? So they could still buy a cottage, they could still buy what have you, but non-recreational properties. So there's some guy, a Chinese billionaire, and in the GTA, in the past five years, he's bought over $154 million worth of real estate. So they're trying to ban uh, people like that from that kind of thing from happening. But to be honest, if this guy spent $154 million in five years, I'm sure, I forget if it was five years, yeah, five years, I'm sure he can figure a way around it and put an incorporated number or something, but that's just my opinion. Um, I haven't said hi to people in a while, but I can't actually tell who it is. I think it's um, Caitlin and Jeff, maybe. Thank you guys for popping in. Okay. Um, so I still have some more real estate stuff. So um, a recent economist said that sellers are being very greedy and buyers are being irrational basically because um, sellers are like, I'm just going to pick a number in the sky and expect to get it. But some buyers are like, I'm just so sick of losing out on homes and just want to get in the market. They're paying it and they're not looking at like what it's going to appraise for, what is the underwriter going to say it's worth and so forth. And they're just buying it. So that is what he has said. Um, just uh, irrational people and greedy people is what he said. Um, there was a family in Ohio and they bought a church. Uh, it was a couple, they're 38 year old, 38 year old uh, married couple and they have five kids ranging eight to 15. They just bought a church uh, that was built in 1903 and converted it. Um, they even added a slide, which I thought was cool. Um, there was bats and etc. in the house or in the um, church, but they obviously fixed that up. And anyways, we just listed a church this afternoon. Um, not in Ohio, but just outside of Collingwood in Clearview. It has 4,424 square feet and is, um, what was I going to say, has a steel roof and is listed for $7.99. So if you guys are into that and want to have like not a cookie cutter home and stuff, it's gorgeous with this rounded portion and all these obviously stained glass windows and there's a big addition on the back um, that you could add lots of rooms in or bedrooms or put an apartment in the back or something like that is also um, on a almost an acre of a property uh, lot. So that's cool. If you guys want to um, renovate a church, I always want to renovate a church. So you guys can do it for me. Um, okay. So Barry in the last seven days. Um, thank you, Scotty, for loving my blouse. It was for our photo shoot the other day, but I didn't wear it. Um, okay. So Barry in the last seven days, there was eight new listings. Um, Oh, sorry, not Barry, Barry Condos. I was going to say that doesn't sound right. There's only seven <laughs> or there's only eight listings. Condos in Barry, there was only eight new listings in the past seven days, okay? And five of them went conditional, 15 went firm. So obviously, 
Um, there was way more that sold than there were actually were listed, which means it went into last week's inventory, which uh, if you watched my last week, you knew that there that also went into the week before. So again, just lack of inventory and that just keeps going into prior and prior weeks. Hence our no inventory. Um, two people uh, increased their price and 12 people got their keys in the last week in condos and Barrie. In Springwater in the last seven days, there were eight new listings. One of them already sold conditional and nine sold firm. So obviously there again was more that are selling than are available. So going into last week's inventory, four people got their keys, which just means they bought like previously in the year, but their possession date was in the past week. Um, one person increased their price, one person decreased their price and two people canceled. Okay. When people cancel, they might just be listing for a different price. So for example, they could have listed $6.99, not got what they liked and then canceled and relisted at $9.99, for example. Okay. Doesn't mean like they canceled and are not relisting. Um, so Oro in the last seven days, there were 14 new listings, two sold conditional and nine sold firm. So there was only 11 out of 14. So there was some extra in Oro. So not as much lacking as uh, Barry and some other areas. So Oro, maybe you want to check out Oro. Um, Barry in the last seven days, for example, will show your lack of inventory. So there was 83 new listings, seven of them conditionally sold and 84 of them sold firm. So 91 out of 83 listings, so 91 is obviously more, 91 listings uh, are off the market even though there was only 83. So they had to go into prior week's uh, inventory. 64 people got their keys, uh, four people dropped their price but it could just be to spur a bidding war and two listings got suspended. They could have done something wrong or not shown something, etc. Um, okay, so you love all the converted churches? I do too. I um, know somebody that stayed at one and it said they had like a neon sign right at the front door and it said sinners welcome. Um, so anyways, you could do some fun punny stuff in a church for an Airbnb. Um, next question comes from Becky in Creamore. So Becky in Creamore said, we currently rent and would like to get in the market, but by the time we add utilities and property taxes, it always seems to be slightly out of reach. Why are some places so cheap and property taxes and others so expensive? Um, thank you, Becky, for asking. So obviously it depends if, for example, you were just looking in Creamore, um, say somebody could have got a permit for a basement and somebody didn't get a permit, somebody got a permit for a deck, somebody didn't, etc. The more times obviously you get a permit, the more value um, MPAC says your house is worth, etc. So your taxes are going to be higher. But if you were, say, comparing Creamore to Barry or um, Springwater to Barry or Innisfil to Barry, etc., Barry has high taxes because Barry has a lot going on, right? So they have lots of, um, say, roads, that are being done new or lots of rec centers that are being done new or let's just say you know the library or what have you they say hey we need 30 million i just made that number up i don't know how much it says we need 30 million for 2022 divided by this many number of people equals 0.0007 percent or something like that and they times your house value by uh, that um but say for example clearview they might be doing one road and one new stop sign or i don't know something like that that's obviously a naive thing to say i'm sure they're doing more than that but um, it's just based off of what they say they're doing. So some places, even though they're only 10 minutes from Barrie, they don't have the actual amenities that Barrie does. Also, some of those places might not have uh, municipal services. So they might not have sewers. They might not have water. You might be on well, um, septic, etc. But some people like well because it's free water. Uh, so everybody's different of what they are. But that is basically the reason why. Um, hi, Sherry. How are you? I can't see who the last bubble was. Okay. So what is my next thing? Um, again, I did, I always do like the questions that you guys ask. I do the um, happy news and then I do the real estate updates. Okay, so now I'm back to my happy news and then with your guys' questions. So, you know how they always say like man's best friend. Thank you for the love, Scotty. They always say man's best friend and they don't uh, just say it for the fun of it. So there was a man in, what was the name of the place? Port St. Lucie, I don't know, in Florida. He's 81. He had one of those motorized scooters or wheelchairs and um, he got stuck kind of like in mulch on an embankment and he was trying to you know, reverse and get out of it. And he ended up somehow going down the embankment and going into the um, river. And he's 81 in a wheelchair, so obviously that is not ideal. So the dog started barking, but there was nobody around. So the dog ran up to the road and started barking um, kind of frantically. And there was two construction workers and they you know, realized something with the dog, so they ended up following the dog and getting the man. And anyways, the man lived. He is happy, obviously. He had his dog with him, which had a cute name. I forget what the name was, Sarah Jane. The dog's name was Sarah Jane. 
So he said Sarah Jane got a nice treat when they got back home after he was saved, but I thought that was cute. Um, the next question comes from Jake in Lafroy. All right, Jake in Lafroy uh, said, I want to do a basement apartment and live in it and rent out my upstairs. What would be my best plan of attack for that? Um, thank you, Jake, for asking. So I don't know if you mean like, um, you know, getting a permit or not getting a permit or layout wise or what have you, or even renting out if you want, if you're like, hey, should I rent it out on Airbnb or should I rent it long term? So it's kind of a general question. But um, I personally, as I'm saying this live, don't usually get permits because permits take more time. But obviously you should do as I say, not as I do. You should get a permit um, to do it. But a lot of people obviously don't. Um, and then just make sure you have your own laundry or you could do shared laundry if you want. But obviously having renters coming into your space to do laundry is not ideal. So whether it's shared or you have your own separate and they have their own. And just make sure you do like sound channels or rock sole or both between the floors. So that's the green insulation instead of the pink. Just for sound, you're still going to hear things because you have the same furnace. So the vent work and ductwork will be the same. But obviously if you can do, you know, 5 eighths drywall, etc. And if you're making it legal, they're going to make you do 5 eighths drywall anyway, which is the thicker drywall. And they're going to make you have like interconnected smoke alarms. So when the one upstairs goes off, the one downstairs goes off, they're going to have um, self-closing fire doors doors so you can't just have like a bedroom door that is hollow because obviously in a fire a fire will go quickly through that and also in say for example laundry rooms furnace rooms etc the ceiling has to be drywalled which normally people don't have that in their furnace room but they want it for fire protection uh reasons okay um so those are just a few of the things also it has to be above six feet or higher above bulkheads in the basement you can't have a six foot um, ceiling in the basement and then under bulkheads is like five eight or something like that it has to be a minimum of six feet it might even be higher now it was six feet last time I did it okay thank you for asking um, what else do we have uh, oh yeah there was an, a lady she was 29 and she is now able to live a normal life basically in her teens she started to get a tumor on the side of her face and it grew to like the size of two grapefruits and eventually um, was impeding on her esophagus and so forth and she could only have like small bites of rice or soft foods like eggs etc and obviously liquids um, and then there's this um, boat that comes around which I've never heard of even though it's been doing things since 1978 but I have never heard of it um, so it's called Mercy Ship and um, it's just picture like a big cruise ship and they've done over 100,000 life uh, saving surgeries and they also teach people in these local communities which are obviously um, third world countries and um, not obviously the highest wealth in these countries. They teach them how to do medical practices, etc., be nurses and so forth. Um, so they've trained over 42,000 people in these 57 nations on how to do things in case they're not around. Um, so anyways, they took off this massive tumor of hers. She's now engaged. She has a five-year-old daughter and she has her own um, seamstress shop. So I just thought that was cute. I didn't know about this boat and it's been around since 1978. So that's pretty cool. Um, next question comes from Mary in Barry. Slightly a tongue twister or just a rhyme. Um, Mary in Barry said, I feel like my whole family has been holding our breath for this rate change and now it's happened. How quickly will it affect the market? Um, thank you, Mary, for asking. I know obviously I just did a blurb on that, but you didn't know I was going to do that. So yeah, they said six um, to 18 months for it to take effect, but that's only if it goes up more than a percent and it only went up a quarter of that. So it's not expected to do anything uh, to it currently. Again, most people either don't have mortgages, are already locked in at higher rates, or were already approved at 2% higher, so it's not going to matter anyways. And they're already on a fixed rate, not a variable rate anyway. So it's going to affect such a small amount, and even the amount that it does affect, they were approved at that 2% higher anyways. So it's really not going to do anything. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to do anything, and I apologize because it's not going to, so I apologize if you want me to say that. Um, Anyway, sorry, I'm just reading what you guys are saying. Okay, so next thing uh, I said before about landfills. This one, though, is kind of about landfills, but scraps. So obviously there's lots of restaurants and so forth, as well as grocery stores, and sometimes things maybe don't look as appealing. I know, for example, Scotty knows um, Justin, a friend of mine, um, does not like when bananas are bruised, so he gives them to me. But meanwhile, if you open the skin, you know, it's still a regular banana inside. It's not all gross and disgusting and ready for banana bread. But basically, um, this lady started an app five years ago, and she um, aligns, you know, so she has over 800 restaurants and grocery stores in it, so they say, hey, we have extra food or whatever, and then she has over 250, 
not 250,000, 25,000 volunteers that then go on this app, they see where the food is and she has all these recipes. So then they make all this food. Again, it's all volunteer. They take it to local shelters and so forth and then it obviously gets repurposed. So that is really cool. So they have done over 57 million, and I'm not reading that wrong, 57 million meals and they average 600 meals a week per city. Um, so that is super cool. So I don't know, I like cool things like that, giving back to people and thinking of smarter ways to use our, you know, what we're doing in our waste and so forth. So um, anyways, there are a lot of lives that we have this weekend. If you guys want to check them out, um, feel free to do so. I have not picked all the times yet, so we will post all of those. Hopefully you guys uh, have a great week. Stay kind to another, one another. Uh, go after your dreams. Please do not judge others or live in the past. Do not hold grudges and have a super fantastic day.